today's segment is Happier Holiday Meal Prep, and we have Jenny Donovan with us. Jenny is amazing, and I'll introduce her in just a moment. I, um, I'm Kelly Robert, and I am the Journey Program Manager. I'm part of the marketing department at Union Bank, and my colleague, Caitlin Moore, who is also part of the department. She's the financial literacy manager. She has been so gracious in these series. She, she lets us use her Zoom license. She handles the registration and everything IT. So, so I wanted to give a shout out to Caitlin. And Caitlin today is playing another role. She just can't wear enough hats where these are are concerned. She's actually presenting next week. But today she is competing with another member of our department, Kate Staus, who is the Assistant Vice President of Marketing Acquisition and Retention. She just got that title and I was afraid that I would botch it. Kate, did I? No, I think you got it right, but I'm not even sure what it is, so. (laughs) Okay, great. If you had, I wouldn't have known. (laughs) They're going to participate in a special competition, which I will let Jenny tell you about. We're missing one other member of our department who is always just so instrumental in putting these series together that just helps me connect all the dots. And that's Nikki Davison who's just an incredibly talented marketing coordinator. And Nikki couldn't be with us today. And we just wanted to let her know that we were thinking of her. Um, We also, we just have a couple of little housekeeping topics. I think Caitlin let you know that she's going to handle the muting. So you don't have to mute yourself. And usually I invite you to to stay on camera. We really want to see you because we do record these. However, we're going to let Jenny and Kate and Caitlin be the stars so we can see them. So we'll know you're there. And and if you have questions, Jenny's awesome about answering them. If you want to use the chat feature and just send those, type your questions and send those to me or even to everybody, I think we'll have some time at the end for those questions. I want to tell you just a little bit about Jenny. She's the registered dietitian with the Midtown High V. She's an incredible human being. And you may know her from a couple of, of things that we have done with her through the Journey program. A quick fix meal prep. And she also has done some videos for our Journey e-news. So, um... If there is a question to be, or an answer to a question, Jenny can always answer it. And she has such fun ideas. I just am really excited for this. So I'm going to let her take the floor. Jenny, tell us about Happier Holiday Meal Prep. So um, I'm excited that Kelly asked me to participate in your guys' series. Um, So my title is Easier, Healthier, Happy Holidays which is kind of um, a play off of Hy-Vee's um, um, motto. So I hope today to share a lot of um, some cooking tips and also things that we sell right now seasonally in our store that can help you manage the holidays this year, which I'm thinking are gonna be looking different for everybody this year. So, and like Kelly said, I'd be more than happy to take questions as they come along. I'm also going to tap Caitlin and Kate in a little bit to engage in a cooking competition, which totally plays into one of the topics that I wanted to talk about today. So, um, let me just move my... Okay. So Hy-Vee is part of the FMI Association, the Food Industry Association, and it's been so fascinating to me. They've been doing um, like bi-weekly reports on shopping trends during COVID-19. So of course, they had some projections for the holidays, and you can kind of see them there for Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. And I would say um, 
I have a young family, so we definitely participated in Halloween. I really wasn't sure what it was going to look like this year because the CDC said they didn't highly recommend any door-to-door trick-or-treating. But we went ahead and went to the neighborhood that we usually trick-or-treat in, and I would say about 50% of the homes had their lights off. And those that were participating in trick-or-treating, about 50% of those houses just went ahead and had um, distance-friendly candy options. So they either had candy bags taped to their fences or they had some candy bowls um, just sitting out. You know, um, so this is kind of how it's gonna look for Thanksgiving. Less of us are planning on getting together with extended family. We're already planning on fewer dishes, smaller portions, Um, And also you can look to the Christmas holiday too. Um, We're gonna prioritize safety over get togethers. And also some of us will be foregoing Christmas um, religious services. And then already for New Year's, most of us are planning on not going out. So Hy-V has already kind of seen these trends. Um, we have a pre-made holiday box menu that we always do for catering. And we're already seeing a ton of orders, but those orders are much smaller than they were in years past. And also we've already seen an uptick in our aisles online shopping, our e-commerce. Um, people are already starting to holiday shop. So I think that's gonna explode this year too. So, you know, our health department is asking us to avoid the three C's. And I really ask you to be prudent as you think about planning your holiday season this year and how you can, um, you know, avoid crowded places, the close contact, and how you can just practice, if you are together, how you can practice a little bit more safety. And, you know, I noticed that the Lincoln physicians are really coming out and asking you on social media to please just consider doing holidays with your intimate um, household family members. So maybe foregoing that extended family tradition. And just because of what I have friends that work in healthcare and they are stressed, maybe you guys have family members that work in healthcare. Um, I'm not sure if you're getting the same message. So how can we help them even have a good holiday? Um, I guess if you guys are planning on getting together, you know, even with some family members, if you guys do sit down for a holiday meal, um, maybe having hand sanitizer close by, I would still encourage you guys to wear your mask inside. How can you increase the ventilation in your homes? Can you guys switch to an outside event? Can you guys host it in your garage? I I think a lot of the home improvement stores are responding to customers who are frantically trying to build fun outdoor spaces. Um, They're selling lots of fire pits. Um, People are putting up some last minute gazebos. Even if you guys have sit down for a holiday meal, can you guys use plastic utensils? Um, You know, can you avoid everyone scooping their own? Can one person be in charge of putting the food on the plate? All right, so this is the fun part, the interactive part that I've taught Caitlin and Kate to help us with today. So something that you guys could do, a fun holiday twist that you guys could do at home is do a Zoomed chop salad, a chop challenge with your family members that you're not getting together this year, but maybe you're gonna get together virtually on Zoom. So kind of to set the stage, I Kelly picked up two bags, mystery bags from me yesterday, and she passed them to Caitlin and Kate. They don't know what's in them. So this is how it's going to work. Um, they're going to have two minutes to kind of do some recipe searching once they open their bags. And then they're going to have 20 minutes to prepare. So while I'm going to continue the conversation with you guys, they're going to be in their kitchens cooking and we can kind of keep an eye on them. That's why we asked you guys to turn on off your videos so we can see them as they're going. Um, Why don't you guys go ahead and open your bag so we can kind of see what ingredients you're going to be working with. And you guys are on um, mute. So maybe I'll have you guys unmute. So just um, one by one, we'll kind of tell you guys can tell the audience what's in your mystery bags. 
I will just say this took a lot of self-control to not peek. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I'm very proud of myself. I, I have phyllo shells. Okay, so they both have phyllo shells, which is something that I often think of as a holiday thing. So that's why I tuck them in the bags. They're just phyllo shells in a little pre-made little cup. And so you can make them savory or sweet. So it looks like Kate has the savory bag. So what do you Ooh, have? Greek cream cheese, which I've never heard of. Oh, and I so have... that... oh go ahead. Oh, so that um, cream cheese that Kate just showed up, that's a higher protein cream cheese and it's lower in fat. So and I have raspberries and whipped cream, extra creamy. Okay. So Caitlin has the sweet bag. What else do you have, Kate? Uh, crab meat and tiny shrimp. Okay. Let's see here. So glad I got the bag that I got. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of glad I got the bag I got. And green onion and red pepper and cheese. Okay. So kind of Kate has things that we, you know, we think of cheese balls at the holidays. We think of food at the holidays so that's kind of where I was pushing her toward and then what else do you have Caitlin um I got some milk two percent milk some jello chocolate pudding the I don't think it's the, it's the instant kind and then an avocado which is right okay Right. So also your job is to use at least all of your ingredients you don't have to use them in the entirety um we will be judging you on the use of your ingredients and the presentation, because obviously we can't do any taste testing. So that's the best we can do. Do you guys also want to unwrap your phyllo shells and just kind of give it a close up view so people know kind of what the key um, ingredient we're working with? Now, are we allowed to add other ingredients that we have on hand? Like, the, no, I can't, we can't use the chop not, kitchen. <laughs> not for this challenge. <laughs> okay. So there, and so usually cells. this product is found in our frozen department by the frozen, like, cake. Rest. Um, sometimes this time of the year, we'll get a shipper and we'll just have it. They're shelf stable too. So we'll have them, like, maybe tucked in the aisles. All right. So if you girls are ready, um, I'm going to set my stopwatch for two minutes so you guys can do some recipe searching if you need, or you guys can get right to work. Okay. Are you guys ready? Do you have your phones by you? Yes. Yep. All right. Ready, set, research. <laughs> I think I'm going to wing it. I think I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so this is totally something that you guys can do at home with to engage your extended family members. You can have a neutral party like I was the neutral party and I assembled these mystery bags. So if you guys need help, if this something if this is something that you guys want to do with your family members but you're kind of stuck, I'd love to help you so you guys can reach out to me and I'll list my um way to contact me at the end of the presentation and you can totally do it a few different ways. You guys could put Everyone gets the same ingredients with a standard recipe and you can see who executed the best. You can put like I did, like a um, bag of mystery ingredients and it's a free for all. So some fun things that you could do is you could do um, ingredients for salsa. Um, I've done it with pizza where the standardized recipe is that Greek yogurt pizza crust where you just get the self-rising flour and um, the Greek yogurt. And then I put a standardized recipe of how to make the crust in there. And then it's a free for all for the toppings. You could do, do people, can they memorize, um, have them memorize how to make chocolate chip cookies? Can you see how they can do that? A charcuterie board would be fun or just even a cupcake war or a gingerbread house competition, right? So at the store, we have a ton of gingerbread houses, right? So you can even stuck that into everybody's bag and maybe with some extra candy and frosting and then see who executes the gingerbread house the best. So you guys can, you know, after your competition, you can invite a third party to jump on the Zoom call to be the judge. 
All right, so they have 10 seconds. Oh, you know what? It looks like they're just winging it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer for 20 minutes. All right, so you girls are hard at work. So there's also some alternative fun things that you guys can do. I did look ahead to the forecast and it looks like um, the projection for Thanksgiving is supposed to be about the mid forties. So maybe if you're not getting together in house with their extended family, maybe you can meet grandparents, um, aunts or uncles, cousins outside at a local state park like Mahoney State Park and go on a hike. Um, Maybe you guys could even, you could even do this over Zoom or the family that you are going to have um, just to make it more fun to wear a mask. You could have an ugly mask contest. The Lincoln Children's Zoo is having their zoo lights display. So maybe you guys can get tickets and meet extended, extended family at the zoo. I looked at their safety protocols and they are amazing. Looks like you have to stay in your car until your ticket number is up and they can only allow so many people in um, the gates every 15 minutes. And kind of piggybacking on that idea, maybe you guys could do a caravan where you guys go around the city and looking at holiday lights. I think a lot of people are going to put up Christmas lights earlier this year. Maybe you even ex invite that family members over for a backyard s'mores um, dinner um, snack <laughs> or um, my little holiday meal down there. You guys could even do a progressive dinner. Maybe you could visit a few houses in your car and you pick up a different holiday item at that house. Like somebody has made the rolls or the turkey or the pie or grandma's made her favorite side dish that everybody loves. So you get to say hi to somebody, but you also get to pick up those favorite dishes. Or also piggybacking on the car idea, maybe you guys get together as in the cars and you go on a scavenger hunt across the city. Or again, maybe you just meet outside and do a scavenger hunt. All right, look at, oh, look at their camera angles. That's awesome. Hey, um, Caitlin. Could you play that video for us? Yep. I'm just, I'm just gonna, sh um, so Caitlin's gonna um, multitask for us and I have a video. I'm gonna stop sharing. She's gonna share a video that I have. When, there we go. All right. Oh wait, let me make sure that's gonna share our volume. Let me know if it doesn't play the volume. Here we go. It's Kendall from Hallmark, and welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Celebrate, where together, Hallmark and Hy-Vee show you how to make every celebration easy, meaningful, and memorable. These days, we're all looking for ways to have our virtual gatherings feel as welcoming as our in-person ones. So today, we're going to show you how to throw a truly magical virtual Thanksgiving with some help from my friend Katie. How easy is this, you guys? Hey there, so I ordered all my pre-made holiday meal packs from Hy-Vee, and now I'm gonna add some of my own creative touches to make the experience extra special for each one of my guests. So here are the meal packs. They have everything, and I mean everything. Right down to bakery fresh pies. It's not Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie. I also ordered some floral arrangements from Hy-Vee to make everything feel a little bit more festive, and these pumpkins are gonna do the trick. I wanted all of my guests to have the same floral arrangement, just to make us feel like we're all together on this holiday. So now I'm gonna dress up my dishes a little bit. I wanna make it feel extra special and festive this year. So I'm gonna use some Hallmark gift wrap, some ribbon, and some gift tags to make everything a little bit more fun. It can be as simple as tying a ribbon around the box with a pretty bow or adding a gift tag to label each dish to make it feel a little bit more special. 
Okay, so I want to stick something a little bit special in everybody's meal kits. These are my fall spice signature brownies that my family loves at the holidays. I'm going to tie the recipe card to each jar so that they have all the instructions to make them at home. And I also used the Hallmark gift wrap to kind of keep everything tied together and super festive. Now that all the food is squared away, let's get to the thanks part of Thanksgiving. I'm gonna take a little time and write a personal note to each one of my guests to show them how grateful I am to have them in my life. These gorgeous cards are giving me all kinds of inspiration to share personal stories with each one of them. And then over dinner, we're gonna open them up and we're gonna read them aloud to each other and feel a little bit closer as a family. Okay, time to decorate. As a designer at Hallmark, I love making things on my computer. I was inspired by one of the cards that I'm sending out for Thanksgiving and I made a background for our virtual Thanksgiving. But you don't have to be a designer to do this. You can use your cell phone and take a photo of the card or kind of any inspiration throughout your house and then send it to the family members that are gonna be on the call. These backgrounds are a great way to get everyone in that Thanksgiving mood. Lastly, here are a few tips to make sure that your virtual gathering goes smoothly. Think about computer placement. You wanna make sure that your full face is showing for everyone to see, that you're comfortable, and that there's not too much going on in your background. Do a trial run to help those who aren't as familiar with technology. You may have to do a little troubleshooting. And plan an activity that gets everyone talking so no one feels left out. Okay, all that's left to do is deliver all these meal packs, get back home, and get the party started. Ready, set, Thanksgiving. If you try any of our suggestions for your own Thanksgiving dinner, comment below and let us know how it went. And for more party inspiration, Check out other episodes of Ready, Set, Celebrate on hstv.com. See you next time. All right, Caitlin, thank you. And I'll go back to sharing my screen when she's done. So yeah, I just thought that was, um, that was the canned already video that my company had um, done for me that I think hits totally what I was going to talk about today. I loved how she took pictures of the cards and used those as her virtual background. And also just even opening cards and sharing um, what you're thankful for with each family member. All right, so here are some healthy, let's talk about some dietitian stuff, right? All right. Um, so when I look at the Thanksgiving feast um, as a dietitian, I'm always like, where's the color, right? So maybe since this year is looking a little bit different for everybody, maybe it's time to like add a different side dish that you wouldn't normally do. So everything at the Thanksgiving table is brown and cooked, right? Even the canned cranberry sauce has that cooked red tape um, look to it, right? So how can we add color to the Thanksgiving meal? So I have some ideas for you. Um, Brussels sprouts. So Brussels sprouts, you can either do them like roasted and serve them, or uh, you can do them raw. So what my family does is there's a recipe out there for addictive Brussels sprout salad. Um, you can Google search it, it'll come right up. And it has this really like tangy dressing but you shave the raw Brussels sprouts and then you toss it with that tangy dressing. And then you can even add for that pop of color dried cranberries or pomegranate seeds. Looks super colorful on your Thanksgiving table. And it's really nice to bite into something fresh instead of something so cooked, right? Because everything at the Thanksgiving table also has that kind of same texture, right? <laughs> Soft food. Or you can do the same thing with green beans. My family loves roasted green beans. You just drizzle with olive oil, kind of like you would with the Brussels sprouts and you just roast it at a high temperature in the oven. We will never go back to having boiled green beans again. That um, roasting process just brings out the sweet flavor of the green beans. Something else that we do instead of the canned cranberry sauce, um, oops. 
So we take fresh cranberries and in my food processor, I'll use a whole pack of the cranberries and then I'll um, slice up a whole apple um, or two and then one or two navel oranges. I'll wash really good and just um, um, chop it up and put the whole thing in the food processor. And then to sweeten it, I'll either use honey or some apple cider or you can use cane sugar, like table sugar, or if you're kind of watching calories this year, you can use something like Swerve. Or you can use that Splenda for baking to sweeten it. And then you just pulse it up and you kind of just taste it, make it to your taste. So maybe you need to add some more apples or oranges. Um, and that is so good. Again, it provides that fresh taste on the Thanksgiving table. And you guys, it is so good the next day. We love to serve that topped on plain Greek yogurt. It's so good. And then I keep and keep making it throughout the winter because it provides a lot of vitamin C. I'm just going to check in with my contestants. How's it going, guys? Good. How much time do we have left? You guys have nine minutes left. Good. All right. Going great. And if you guys at home have any tips to share with us, like if you guys have a fresh tasting Thanksgiving side dish that you love, um, you know what, this is, we, I love to share. I love to learn from you guys. And I just wanted to plug this in. This is kind of a new way to reach me at Hy-V. If you go to any of the Lincoln Hy-V store pages and tap in dietitian services, you can book an appointment directly with me or you can email me. And I just bring that up because some of you may be uh, preparing allergy friendly foods. So if you guys need any help on product recommendations or recipes, please reach out to me. All right, so now I just have some fun show and tell stuff. So I'm gonna stop my screen. All right. Oh, I guess I, I have some sweet potatoes sitting in front of me too. This is how we add color to so our Thanksgiving table. Um, you guys can just serve roasted sweet potatoes or what we do too is sometimes I'll do half of the russet and half sweet potatoes and that's what I mash together to give it that bright orange pop of color. And then you could sprinkle some sliced green scallions on it or parsley, again, to just give it that pop of color. Something else that we've been doing every Thanksgiving, um, I don't know if it's an issue this year, you know how there's kind of no stove space or oven space. So we've been making our mashed potatoes in our pressure cooker works fabulous and doesn't use up the oven or the stove. And then it holds it warm until you're ready to serve it. So so I mentioned Hy-Vee is kind of already preparing for some change in consumers um, traditional Thanksgivings. And we are already seeing an increase in demand for smaller size turkeys and turkey breast. I also wanna tell you guys, if you're just planning a small get together, one or two or maybe four, I love these little Cornish game hens. Okay, they're just a fun, festive thing to do. Maybe every, you know, you just do it once a year. What other goodies do I have? Um, I just noticed I love Village Pie Makers. It's a Nebraska made pie company. And I've never seen them have pumpkin pie before. So I'm so excited. If you guys want to know a, a secret about me, I'm not a very good baker at all. Like, and I, I don't know if I just don't have the patience for it, but nothing I bake ever turns out. And I don't know if I'm like OCD, two type A, like I want it to look like the magazine, picture perfect, and it never turns out that way. Um, I'm an excellent cook. If I do say so myself, I'm just not a very good baker. So I definitely had my eye on those village um, pie maker pies. So something else that's super fun that I've been seeing a lot more of pop up in the store is these foodie advent wreaths or advent calendars. So cheese, 24 different cheeses that you can count down the holidays with. This would be more of a 12 days of Christmas thing, but we have um, 
K cups, coffee K cups, different flavors. So that would be fun. And let's wake up for the 12 days before Christmas and try a different flavor of coffee in your Keurig. Or here's the grand prize of them all, right? How about an advent wine calendar, right? <laughs> It's so heavy, I can hardly lift it. <laughs> and I mentioned, um, you know, a, a lot of this time, I've been a high dietitian for 12 years, and something that I've definitely seen over the years is the more allergy-friendly, fun, seasonal products. So, you know, like we have, now we have gluten-free stuffing, so you don't have to stress about how to make stuffing gluten-free, um, I just saw these on the shelf, um, holiday nut pods. I know there's a pumpkin one downstairs too. This is a peppermint mocha. I've never seen this before. Um, so my mom has already said she's not um, going to see us for the holidays, which I totally respect. She's of that high risk age group. And I guess my philosophy is if I have to sacrifice one Thanksgiving or Christmas with her to have 10 more in the future, then that's what we need to do. So I already have planned that I'm going to drop off this tree for her. She lives alone. My dad passed several years ago and she no longer puts up a big tree. So I thought this would be perfect for her. Well, I don't know if you can see that. It's just a little mini tree from our floral apartment and it already comes with the ornaments. So I thought that would be super cute to just um, put it on our doorbell and do a doorbell ditch, right? <laughs> Something else that I've been giving to family members each Christmas is this laundry detergent, which sounds super funny to give as a gift, but it's Zum frankincense and myrrh scented um, laundry detergent. And it has an incredible scent. I was a, the dietitian at the Fremont location and we cannot keep this stuff on the shelf like even all year round. And it has an incredible scent that lingers and it's not too overpowering. Uh, if you guys are into any essential oils at all, people always comment when I have washed my clothes in this, they always ask me if I'm wearing patchouli, but there's no patchouli in this. So, um, but they, it just has a pleasing scent. So I live with a house full of boys so that's why I also like to use this. And I love to wash my bed sheets in it too. All right. I think that's kind of all the goodies I have. Let me check my time. I think I buried my stopwatch, guys. Oh, you guys have three minutes left. So while they're kind of finishing up, I guess I also brought this up. This is um, a charcuterie board to go. But it's so fun to make your own charcuterie boards. And one of my favorite food bloggers who's really good at this is called Clean Food Crush. She makes incredible, healthy charcuterie boards. So again, that would be fun to do a chopped style competition of a charcuterie board. Or if you're just going super simple this year for Thanksgiving or Christmas, um, you know, just small household, I would love to eat a charcuterie board for my holiday meal. I don't need the turkey and the stuffing and the mashed potatoes. I love me some good cheese and crackers, lunch meat, fruits, um, some vegetables, hummus, different kinds of jellies on there, different cheeses. All right. Oh, it looks like, Kate, how are you doing? Wow, great. And Caitlin looks like she's dishing it up. <laughs> oh, I think she did. Um, Caitlin did the hands up. So does that mean you're done, Caitlin? <laughs> oh, and Kate too. So let's kind of check in with them. You guys kind of um, finished at a better time. So Caitlin, why don't you show us your dish and if you came up with a creative name, what ingredients into it and how you are presenting it to us. Yeah, I don't have a creative name. That's an area that I just have no idea. Um, but what I did, so I'm going to put my screen down a little bit so everyone can see. So I have two plates here. I'll bring one up here. 
So I made the chocolate pudding, but I mixed in, I mashed up the avocado almost as the same um, texture as the the pudding and I combined them because I eat keto. So I am not a sugar eater. And so that actually puts more of the protein in with the sugar to offset. Not that I would suggest eating this if you're on keto, but it does kind of offset that sweet taste. So this side is actually the avocado um, chocolate pudding. And then I melted down, or I don't know the technical term for it, but the raspberries, I made them a liquid and I put the whipped cream on top and then put the raspberry liquid on the dessert. And on this side for the sweet people, though it's still the avocado and um, chocolate pudding mix, I added whipped cream into that prior to putting it in the bowl. There's whipped cream on top and the raspberry. So if you're a sweet tooth, there's one that's extra sweet and I did taste them and they are very delicious. So um, my more keto friendly, and then the more sweet side. So that's what I did. Yeah, so in Caitlin's bag, I kind of had a trick ingredient, which was the avocado. And that's a playoff if you guys have ever heard of chocolate avocado pudding, um, where you just mix some like dark chocolate uh, with um, like cocoa powder with a, a really ripe avocado. And you get a really creamy, intense chocolate flavored pudding. So that was kind of the um, one trick in her bag. And I love the, the raspberry reduction, the compote you made. That was a really good use of the raspberries. Okay, now Kate's turn to present. Well, I don't feel like mine is nearly as creative. <laughs> um, I just really went for it. I whipped up the Greek cream cheese and then just added in some diced green onion and a little bit of red pepper, some cheese. And then I mixed crab in and topped with, I don't know if you can see, but topped with the shrimp on top. So I just baked that for a little bit to get a little melty and gooey. And I You're salted and peppered, sorry. And do you have a fun name for your recipe? I mean, this kind of feels like a grown up crab rangoon. Um, you know, if I were pulling from, from the cabinet, I might put out some like chili, sweet chili sauce to go with it. Ooh, nice, nice. All right. So that's kind of, um, just to, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to be the judge. So I think you guys are both winners unless somebody in the audience has, um, wants to say if there's a clear winner or not, but thank you so much for showing our audience how you can play that fun chop challenge this holiday with your family members from a distance. Do you, okay, so now Kelly, I think we could open it up to questions or if you have any specific questions for me. Or we could just open it up to the vote. So <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> very different meals. You did great, Kate. <laughs> They are so different, and, and I don't know. In my book, you are both definitely winners. I don't know how they would vote, and Jenny, no one has voted on that yet, but I do have some questions. Um, somebody wants to know more of your favorite food bloggers, healthy food bloggers. Yeah, so I really like... Um... So I think I have a top three that I always um, refer to that I'm always checking in on Instagram and um, their own food blogger page. But so I like Clean Food Crush. Um, and I think her focus is more on eating color, um, count color, not calories. And so she has a lot of um, she fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, whole grains. Um, just her food photography is gorgeous. Uh, she doesn't list nutritionals on any of her recipes, but again, I think she just has that philosophy of count color, not calories. I also like Pinch of Yun, and she's doing more vegan vegetarian entrees with her recipes that I noticed, which um, I, I just, I'm always trying to eat um, also in our family, just more color. So pinch of yum kind of does that too for me. And she also incorporates more, um, ethnic cuisine too. Like she'll use a lot of times the, the coconut milk or, um, like Thai inspired recipes. So 
Um, she does a lot with lentils and beans, which I really appreciate. At our house, we try to eat uh, one meal a week that's meatless. So, um, and then my other favorite blogger is um, Skinny Taste. And I like her because she does, you know, lots of meals that I feel are family friendly and more traditional in taste, maybe with a little bit more of a healthy twist to it. And she also has a weekly meal planner that she puts out. So sometimes I like to check in there just even to get some recipe inspiration. Also at her webpage, you can search for um, recipes by type. So like if you want to do the keto or low carb or diabetes or heart healthy um, plant-based, she kind of has them categorized by that. Also the cooking method. So if you want to find more pressure cooker recipes or slow cooker recipes, she also has them categorized by that too. Nice. Thanks. Okay. Um, she says, this is not a question, but I'm really excited to try that Greek cream cheese. And it's delicious. That's what I buy. She says, I wonder if Kate or Caitlin could comment on the taste or tech, yeah, comment, excuse me, if the taste or texture is any different. So Kate was the only one that had it. Um, so yeah, Kate, I see you're munching away. So um, I think it feels lighter. I also whipped it so that might have given it a lighter feel, but like not in a unsatisfying way. I think the flavor is amazing. So 10 out of 10 would recommend. Good. Awesome. Do you, okay. do you have the, um, Caitlin, do, or sorry, Kate, do you have the package still? Mm hmm. Yeah. Do you, how many grams of protein is in that? Let's see here. For two tablespoons, it is four grams of protein. Okay. And traditional, like me, has one or two. Um, and how many calories? Um, 60 calories for two tablespoons. And fat? Fat is three grams total. I used to be able to find that in whipped and in, in a tub and Jenny, it must not come that way anymore because I have difficulty locating that and high V is where I shop. Yeah. And you know, that's funny. Um, I just grabbed that. And then when I was walking away, I did remember that it came whipped too, but I didn't know. Um, um, I thought maybe it would be better to prepare if it wasn't whipped. So I didn't go back and check to see if there was that tub of the whipped kind. But yeah, this was awesome. Uh, somebody else wants to know if you have easy chips, easy Thanksgiving chips for type two diabetics. Yeah, you know what I think for so kind of my philosophy when I work with type two diabetics is. I don't like to call them a cheat day, but kind of give yourself a break, especially if you religiously follow a diet and your blood sugars are well controlled. Um, Cause I never want to feel like you can't participate in a holiday because we're all about food, right? In our culture. Uh, but if you, again, you know, what can you do to add more color to your table? So the vegetables that I was talking about, if it's Brussels sprouts or the roasted green beans, can you, the portion size of those should be about a baseball. Okay, so can you put a portion of those right on your plate? Um, when you're, if you're gonna have pumpkin pie or any kind of pie, the serving size of that is about a light bulb. Um, you know, even like my sweet potatoes that I brought. Um, I brought two different sizes. I don't know if that shows up very well. Mm -hmm. This this guy right here is like easily enough for two. All right. So, you know, serve roasted sweet potatoes at your Thanksgiving meal, but only have half this guy or a smaller one to yourself. Okay, thanks. And oh, one more. Can you give suggestions for Thanksgiving with, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, FODMAP? foods? Oh, yeah. You know what? That's interestingly, um, I, I was thinking about this because I have been got, getting lots of FODMAP consults lately. And for, for those of you guys who don't know, it's just where you have a fructose intolerance. 
So the biggest culprit for Thanksgiving, I think, is that garlic and onion that's used to prepare so many dishes. It's really hard to get away from that. And um, so if you can modify recipes that don't have those as the main ingredient, like it's garlic and onion is even in chicken stock a lot of time or beef stock. So it's, it's really hard to get away from that. Um, but like, I mean, you can do like the green beans, like the roasted green beans, just not the green bean casserole. That would be an easy switch. Um, doing some gluten-free breads. Like we have some really nice gluten-free rolls that you could do on your dinner table instead of the traditional wheat roll. Okay. Okay. Thank you. There aren't any other questions coming in. Um, I think contestants, you were amazing. And it looks like your, your end result was delicious. We'll, um, we're all going to wait by our front doors for you to drop off our, our samples because, well, we've missed them. Um, I, I, I knew Jenny would be awesome, and she was. She is truly my sister from another mister, loves to cook, hates dessert, although I wish I were as knowledgeable about nutrition as, as she is. She just always makes doing the right thing, eating the right way, um, really fun and really easy to understand. Um, I also, I really, I'm going to go get a couple of those advent calendars. I, I love the idea of a foodie advent calendar. Um, before we go, Caitlin, are you done cleaning up? Would you like to give us a sneak peek of next week at next week's presentation? Yeah. Um, next week I will be going over holiday budgets. So um, really proactive budgeting. How do we save for holidays? How do we spend well and wisely? And then we will have somebody from our customer service department um, coming on to join us to talk about scams that are going on right now or um, things you need to be looking out for as the holidays approach as far as your bank account and security on that. Um, so just some trends that we've been seeing um, even now that they just want to let everybody know about whether you bank with us or not. Um, this goes for everyone. So join us next week for the money talk as far as holidays go. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Well, thanks to everyone who tuned in today on this kind of gloomy day. I certainly hope you got something out of it. And a great big, huge thanks to Jennifer Donovan from the Lincoln Midtown High V. Um, I it, this was just beyond awesome. And I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.